We are at the point in the world right now, in time, where the possibilities we have is enormous. We've never had such great possibilities that we do right now. We also have great challenges to take part in. We have challenges all over the place that we need to solve, and technology can be part of that solution. But it's amazingly important that we are responsible for our actions. We need to be responsible human beings, making the best out of the opportunities we have to solve the challenges we have. So we need to be in total control. The problem is that we are not always in total control. Because things are, these days, moving so extremely fast. We've all probably heard about this exponential growth that skyrockets up in the air and, and with speeds that is impossible to understand. Last year, I attended a little course, an online course in exponential thinking. Uh, and it was really, really interesting. And I tried to explain the difference between linear development that we are pretty used to and exponential development. Uh, and to try to kind of explain and, and th uh, put things in, in a, a bit the context and, and to show the difference. If you imagine that you are to go 30 steps, and one, each step is one meter, and it's linear development, that's what we're used to. How far do you get then? 30 meters, yeah, very good, very good, yeah. So 30 meters, that, that was not hard, right? If I could take exponential steps, and that would be amazing. And the first step I took was one meter, and I then took 30 steps. Do you know how far I'll get then? 26 times around the world. And that's pretty amazing. And it's still hard to understand how fast that is, but it is really, really fast. And to try to kind of explain this in a more, uh, I don't know, uh, proper way, ever since humans were invented, we've kind of relied on linear development. And we have had a pretty clear assumption on where to end up. Things are going a little bit better next year, and next year a little bit better, and that's the way we planned. Now suddenly someone came up with this exponential thing, and we end up up there somewhere. And the challenge is oftentimes when especially young people come up with great ideas, using new technologies, coming to me as your boss and telling you that hey, listen to me, I'm going to fix this and we're going to do amazing. The problem is that in the beginning, exponential development is slower than what we're used to. So, so when you come up, with, uh, come up with this idea and show me the results, it's not as good as we are used to. And it happens again and again, and then suddenly I'll say, you know what, let's stick to the old way of doing things. And then suddenly, kaboom, something happens. And you may have to be a bit crazy to rely on that idea that this is going to, to go that way. And some people are. I mean, for instance, a guy, a South, American, a South African guy, pretty famous for making electric cars. He revolutionized uh, the, the production of electric cars and batteries and power. He also, Elon Musk, came up with the ideas some years ago, not too many years ago, that I am going to make a rocket that is going up in the sky and then can go back to Earth again, land, and we can reuse that rocket. People were laughing at him. That's not possible. It's only in the cartoons you can do stuff like that. Last year, this guy, he placed a rocket, launched it up in the sky, placed an electric car, now going in orbit around the sun. And I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, but it's possible. And that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And if you're very, very interested, you can actually go into a website that's called wheresteroadster.com because it's a directly roadster, that car. Uh, so you can follow the, the pattern. And it's now actually gone one time around the sun, and it's on its way to March, which is really amazing. And, and, and if you like, I mean, these guys are pretty nerdy, and I like nerdy guys. I, I really love that. And, and they fill this car with, with excellent references. For instance, the driver in the roaster is named after David Bowie's Spaceman. Uh, and then, of course, they played David Bowie's Space Oddity on max volume when they placed the car out in space as long as there were power aboard uh, the Tesla, which is also a total waste of time because there's no one there to listen and sound doesn't travel in vacuum. But it doesn't matter. It's possible. And that's that's the amazing thing, I think. And also, of course, in, uh, in the, uh, the glow, uh, not department, but, uh, yeah, you know, Hanskrumme, uh, uh, of that car, there is a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, together with a towel, for those of you who know that reference as well. So there's no doubt that we people are shaped by technology. And, and especially guys like me, I mean, 50-year-old guys pushing, or 49-and-a-half-year-old guys, 
We're so much into technology that we have a tendency to think that everyone in the world is only thinking about technology. You cannot impress anyone by making a cool phone anymore because they're there. We're used to having them. Uh, what, so, so people don't really care about technology anymore. What we care about is what the technology can do for us, the value it brings to our lives. And now we're going to kind of touch in on the concept of hyper-adoption because people see past the technology. They see what the technology is all about and how it can help us make a better world and, and make my life life even better. Uh, and the most important thing about technology, you know what that is? The most important thing, just think about yourself. What's the most important thing about technology? That the shit works. I mean, there's nothing more annoying than technology that doesn't work, right? Yeah. So make sure it works. That's very, very important. So. Uh, Hyperadoption, this concept of hyperadoption, I learned it from a very brilliant guy from Forrester Research. His name is James McQuiwi. He's written a book about it, a bunch of, of talks and, and blog posts and articles about hyperadoption. But it's about the concept that we people now, we understand the technology and we look past the technology and to see what we can use it for. And to kind of experiment a little bit with that, I, for a few years ago, I asked 1,000 people if they were willing to have a chip implemented underneath the skin if it was not dangerous. That was the only thing I said. Anyone here care to have a chip implemented underneath their skin if it's not dangerous? Hand in the air. Yeah, not so bad, right? Yeah, 13% in my, my survey said that that sounded like a good idea. And the interesting thing about that was when I started to talk to these people, none of them talked about privacy or tracking or surveillance and all that stuff. Only thing they were into was that would be so cool because I always tend to forget the key to the gym. I could start my car, I could pay in the store, I can open my door. People had a pretty clear idea of what they could use that technology for. And then some guy told me that, you know, that you can actually have a chip implemented underneath your skin if you care. Uh, so I went to Stockholm, uh, to a place called Epicenter in Stockholm. Um, there's a project there called uh, Bio Nyfiken or Bio uh, Curious. <coughs> and the guy running that project, Hannes, looks really, really like an ordinary guy, completely crazy. <laughs> I love that guy. He has so many great ideas. And he asked me, do you want to chip underneath your skin? And, and before I knew it, I was in a taxi going to the dodgy end of Stockholm Centrum uh, to a piercing studio for the first time in my life. I met a piercing artist there. He called Chai. He had the vampire teeth, pointy ears, and a, a split tongue. Very nice guy. Very, uh, truly a nice guy. And, and um, I ended up uh, like this. So if you're a bit weak-hearted, please look away now. Hoppa i det. Då så har vi en pust in och pust ut. Färdig. Fortsätt andas. Keep on breathing, he says. I was pretty pale. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of needles. Uh, and I did not know that he was going to shoot as well. And, and I asked him in forehand, uh, does it hurt? And he didn't really answer to that. And it did hurt uh, a lot, uh, I would say. When I came to my senses again, he turned around and on the back of his T-shirt, it said, of course it fucking hurts. What do you think? <laughs> um, so, but anyways. Now I have an NFC chip in my hand. It's the same thing that you have in your access card at work or uh, at your school. Uh, and amongst other things, I can do this. Uh, I can use the printer in uh, my office. I can unlock my, uh, my little locker. I can pay in the cantina or at the cafe, uh, both in Sweden and at the office here in Norway. Uh, and I can also have a new version now. I actually have three chips now kind of gotten into a thing for me. Uh, uh, that, that makes light when, when it's connected to something really good party trick, actually. Uh, and, and, but this technology is not new technology. This is it's exactly the same technology as we use for, for ID marking cat, cats and dogs and stuff like that. So I also put in my owner's information on my chip. So, so if you find me on the street, just call a veterinarian. They'll scan me, and they know who owns me. No problem. And, and the fun thing is that we have a cat. So me and our cat, we can also open the cat hatch, which is really, really important. Uh, but. Then again, the most important thing about this is not me being able to pay for my coffee in the cantina or open the door. Uh, the next generation of these chips are the most important thing because these guys are working towards the goal of making microchips that can be inside your body, monitoring your pulse, your temperature, your sugar level, whatever. And then once a week, you can just tap your phone and it will actually upload it to an uh, artificial intelligence-based platform that knows you, that knows me, that compare my values to what I should have and if I'm not good, I could have a, a prescription uh, at the uh, pharmacy or just push a button and it will de be delivered at my door by drone, maybe. That would be cool. 
But then again, not so important because being fortunate enough to live in Norway, we have doctors on basically every corner. But just imagine what this technology could do for people in places where they do not have a doctor uh, in the same neighborhood. Uh, it could make, I mean, healthcare yet another thing. So that's why I like to be part of stuff like this, to really try out new technology. Uh, so, and I, my guess is, that this will be more common to have a, something implemented in your, in your body uh, in the next five to ten years than not. So, back to my survey. I asked people in 2015, and 13% said in my survey that that sounded like a good idea. In 2018, late that year, a guy called me. He was doing his master thesis at uh, the university in Agder. And he had asked the same question to, uh, question to the students there. And 42% of the students at the university said that this sounded like a good idea. This starts to look a little bit about uh, the, the exponential curve, right? And that young people are really much more positive to trying out new stuff for the good uh, instead of uh, just being afraid of technology. So I think the combination of hyper-adoption and, uh, and uh, exponential development is the key. And we, as grown-ups, with the seniors, the bosses, the people in charge, we need to be aware that this curve here has come to stay and how it works. And we need to really encourage and motivate and support young people when they come with their ideas and not pull them, push them back. We need to encourage people and the younger generation to take a chance and really focus on how they can participate and change the world. And in the meantime, for the rest of us who are a bit afraid of technology, Technology, we should try new stuff. Technology is all around. You can actually now buy high-tech stuff in the store. Uh, and I'm going to show you a really, really cool thing that I came across on eBay. Uh, I love drones, by the way. Uh, and this buddy here, he is uh, costs, I think it's $7 on eBay. It's a little drone. You start it and just throw it up in the air, and then it goes off. And the cool thing is that it's filled with sensors, so you can just touch it, and then it will move backwards. So here we go. Play around with some cheap technology. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> but that's okay, because I have 17 more to go. Yeah? And, and if you get one, just, just throw them up in the air. Oh, another one. Let's try some blue ones instead. Isn't it beautiful? It's probably a reason they cost only seven dollars. There you go. A few more for you. That's fun. Now it starts to look like something here, right? Yeah. Ah, here we go. So, as you fly around with them, please promise me that the grown-ups here support the young ones to really take a chance, to follow the dream, to support them, and to be a bit crazy about what's going on. And, and everyone here should really, really follow your dream. And this is why I think that hyper-adoption will change the world. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.